Hello. I'm out here just messing around. I was doing this up. You're supposed to take and get this worm gear, just buy it and pin it to the shaft so it doesn't turn with a roll pin. But I figured since I'm going to be making the worm, might as well make the worm and shaft all in one piece. Then I don't have any chance of it spinning on me. And I don't have to buy some mild steel stock. I just made it out of some junk I had lying around. I think it turned out quite nice. Right now I'm working on the shaft that goes through it. I've got it all measured out and I just need to do it up. It's raining pretty good outside so can't really do any casting. And it looks like it's going to rain for about the next year. So, let's machine up the spindle for this thing. I'll have to make a reamer a three-quarter inch reamer to open these up to three-quarter inch and I know they're off center I actually measured it that way but it's yeah I'll ream those or I gotta make a reamer and then ream them and they'll be good for the bushings okay let's get on to the shaft Okay, I've got the thing halfway machined. It's a nice sliding fit on the gear, or the shaft is. It's a nice, nice fit. And I've gone up pretty much four inches, which I'll trim the rest out when I get it all together. Move this out of the way here. Now, the other side, I'm going to do the same but leave a quarter inch boss right in the center here which will ride on the back of the worm gear so we'll get to machining that I'll get this flipped and start machining it down I got it turned down. I didn't record a lot of it because I was having trouble trying to find a squeak in my lathe. It, I think the bearings in my life center just went out, so that sucks. But a nice sliding fit and no play. So I think that's good. Both ends are the same way. I have a. Uh, get this out here. I wrap the other end of the shaft in a piece of brass shim to keep it from marking it. Looks quite nice. Let's go put it in, see how it looks. I know it's way oversized, but yeah. Okay, I've got this collar here actually registers on here. And there's a reason for that. Nice tight fit. When this thing's being used, this is going to be the front of the dividing head. 
and all the forces are going to be pushed back this way. Back this way. So that collar built into the shaft is actually pressing against the gear and the whole back frame. And it'll keep everything solid. It is a bit longer than it needs to be. I gotta take a measure off two and a half or two and a quarter inches. And cut it off or face it off to that point and then do a 60 degree point on it for center. This will have to be cut down to size and a collar will have to go on here. But yeah. I'll tighten up the set screw real quick to figure out where the file will mark for the flat in it. And I'll come back. There, got mark for the back side and one right here. I'll, I'll just part it or I'll turn it down till it's nothing, then I'll do the 60 degree point right here. And this one will be faced off on the end. And then onto the set screw collars and everything else for taking up backlash in the back. Got to flip end for end and cut the taper. Okay, I got it indicated in. It's within a half a thousandth or so. So I think that should be good enough there. Set this up. I'll change the compound slide over to 30 degrees and we'll start trimming that down. That's a pretty nice 60 degree point. It looks right on there. It's nice and smooth from the last pass. So we'll take it out and hook it up to see what it looks like in the dividing head. Okay. Looks pretty nice. Um, Wheel back and forth till the set screw bottoms out on flat. Tighten it 
tighten this up. There. And it is exactly two and one quarter inches. Oops. Sorry about that. Yeah, two and a quarter inches right here. Sticking out the front and it just clears the back. So enough to put the locking collar and everything on. I gotta get a real bolt for this part here. I just have it in there to hold the spindle lock in place. It's a little tight for some reason. You might just need some oil in there. But it's... Yep. Um, the... This part here actually is a mandrel for doing the discs. These here. It gets bored out and you use it, the whole dividing head like this, on the drill press so that you could drill the holes perfectly concentric to the outside. And this one goes on in the same place and it's drive dog for turning between centers. So. That's done. Had a burr on the brass, but it's a nice tight fit for whatever. Oh yeah, I think I'm done piddling around for the night, so I'm gonna just call it. It's amazing how well this worm meshes with the gear. There's no backlash at all. So, once it's in there and tightened up, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna call it quits. I'm getting tired and it's getting late, so. Hey, right, thanks for watching. See ya. Also, I've had a lot of questions about remelting brass and bronze shavings. Um, I usually just take and run my furnace a little bit rich, which means I have excess fuel, but that's not hard to do with an oil burner. And I, I run it rich, and before I put it in the furnace, I mix a crap ton of borax with this. When the borax starts melting, it, or before the this starts melting, the borax actually acts as a barrier for the oxygen, so you won't lose very much out of this. You might lose just a tiny, tiny amount, but not much. Now aluminum, on the other hand, suck it up with a vacuum cleaner. It's not worth it. It oxidizes faster than anything, and there's no way to prevent it. But brass and bronze, that's what I do. It's always worked great for me.